If you are a sourdough baker, you must have a lot of discard on hand. Now, I refuse to throw away discard, so muffins are such an easy go-to recipe for breakfast. It's a nice complimentary item to any kind of breakfast meat or just a simple pit of eggs. So, I will show you just the basic recipe and you can add anything to it. Today we're going to add blueberries and cinnamon to it. You can get really creative and add different berries, you can add bananas, you can add nuts, whatever you can come up with, you can add it to this basic discard recipe. Okay, so we have the oven heating up at 400 degrees. I have four tablespoons of coconut oil just melting um, on the stove here. Now, you don't really need to get it hot, you just need to get it to that 75 degrees so that it'll become liquid. Um, again, you don't need to get it hotter than that. So, I have that going. We're gonna add that to our other ingredients. So we'll get the other stuff going first. We'll start out with one cup of our sourdough discard. So I just pulled this out of the refrigerator. I have not fed it, oops. I have not fed it or anything, but it's beautiful and still bubbly. You can still see the bubbles in it, but it definitely wants some food. It's not hungry enough where it has hooch yet, but it definitely wants to be fed. So we're just gonna add one cup of the sourdough discard to a bowl. And then to that, we are going to add two eggs. So we will do two eggs. I just have room temperature eggs here from our chickens. And I save the shells over here. What we do actually, this is kind of interesting. We save our eggshells and we um, bake them at like really low temperature and we'll crush them up and give them back to our chickens as a source of calcium for our chickens. Um, that's a really nice little tip so they don't go to waste. You don't need to wash them. It's not necessary. Um, if you do cook them at a high temperature when you have not washed them, they will smell pretty stinky though. So low temp, 15-20 minutes or so if you have chickens, there's a little tip you can do. So we're just going to add those two eggs in there. So we have the one cup sourdough starter and the two eggs and we'll just whisk that together and then we're going to add one fourth cup of milk and we'll just use an organic whole milk we have here uh, whole milk works best for any kind of baking you just want to have the most flavor and the thickness of the whole milk which works really well Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Just showing some nice people how to make a, uh, a nice pan of muffins. So, and then we're going to add in just a dash of vanilla extract. You can use almond extract. I love the flavor of almond extract, but we're just going to roll with vanilla today. Give that another little stir. And then we're gonna take our coconut oil here. Like I said, it's not hot. It's just melted to get it to the liquefied state. And we're just, as we're whisking, we'll emulsify that in. So we want to make sure that incorporates. And you don't have to use coconut oil here. You can use butter. I prefer the flavor of coconut oil, and it's just a, a nice clean fat, and I prefer that. But we use a ton of butter in this household, so that is not an issue. If you use that, it will turn out awesome. You can hear, my family's getting crazy behind me here. All right, so that is nice and liquefied. So we have all of our liquid ingredients in here now. So we're gonna add in a you can do anywhere from a half cup to a full cup of sugar. I'm going to do about three-fourths cup today. Oh, oh, you know what? I'm going to go grab other sugar. I forgot that I actually had turned our sugar that's in my canister here to powdered sugar yesterday. And that will measure differently, so I'm going to go ahead and open a new sugar here. And use... <laughs> our little lady's talking back there. We're going to use that. So we'll go do a we'll add a half cup of sugar in there and then we'll do another 
that'll be about three fourths cup total in there. It depends on how sweet you want it. Um, I'm going to try to cut back a little bit on the sugar today. Oftentimes I'll make it with a full cup. You can also split it up if you want to use white sugar or and half brown sugar or however you want to do that. The nice thing about this recipe is it's really versatile. You can do whatever you want to it. So now we're going to add in two teaspoons of cinnamon. So I am a hand uh, measure. So I'm just going to pour it into my hand. So usually if you fill the palm of your hand, that's about a tablespoon. So we're going to do two teaspoons. We're going to do just shy of like a full palm here of cinnamon. So I always love how cinnamon, it just creates that little extra background flavor as well as just all the um, health benefits that cinnamon provides. We'll grab, grab some salt here, just a fourth teaspoon. Just going to grind a little bit into my hand and we'll put that in there. And then we also need a teaspoon of baking powder. And we'll get that in there. Oh, that looks like about a teaspoon, maybe. The nice thing about using sourdough starter as a base for a recipe is you're already going to have some leavening in here, in there. And this, these baking powder and baking soda just kind of help that along. So I will go ahead and do a little bit of baking soda as well. We'll do a fourth teaspoon. So that's way too much. Uh, if you do too much, I notice of stuff like this, it just makes it really salty if you don't measure it properly. So we're just going to use, that's about, I mean, it says a fourth teaspoon for the recipe. That's probably a fourth, maybe a little more, no problem. Just add that in. And we are going to just give that a whisk. So now we have we have our sourdough starter discard in there. We have our two eggs. We have our milk, our vanilla extract. We have our sugar. We have our coconut oil. We have our salt, cinnamon, baking soda, and baking powder. Now we're just going to add in the flour. So it's important to get all the other stuff in there first. So then when you add the flour, you just mix to incorporate and then you can put it right in your muffin pan and it's not going to be over mixed. So now we're gonna do one and a half cups. All purpose flour works great. I actually don't have any of that on hand so we're just gonna use bread flour right now. And this is an unbleached bread flour and we're gonna do one and a half cups and I'm not going to sift it or anything. We're just going to use this measuring cup and dip it right in and call it good. This is a half cup measure. I'll do three of these to make one and a half cups. And that looks about good. All right, so we're gonna give that a whisk. Mix that up really well. Also, the fun thing about using sourdough discard in basic recipes like this is you get those health benefits of the fermentation that happens in a sourdough discard. So while, yes, we're adding flour back into the recipe, part of the flour mixture that we are using is partially broken down for us. And that's what allows our gut health and our, our, our stomach to absorb it at a much easier um, easier level, if that makes sense. That's why people who are sensitive to gluten can eat sourdough because of the fermentation that happens. It's a broken down version of the grain. All right, so we'll get that off of our whisk. It's fully incorporated. Get as much off as we can here without making too much of a mess. Just that there. Now we're going to add in some blueberries. So I'm just going to add in what I have left from um, yesterday. Uh, this is not like fresh picked blueberries. They're just from the grocery store. Fresh picked would be amazing. I've made this recipe with um, our fresh picked raspberries and strawberries that come from our garden. We have not harvested blueberries from our garden yet. So this grocery store is fine. Let's see if there's any in here that are icky. We'll pull those out. That one looks kind of funky. <laughs> Most of these are good. So this is just probably, I mean, this is not even a full cup because that's just what we have on hand. So you can add frozen blueberries. You can add 
whatever amount you want. Just know the more berries you add, the more moisture you're going to add into your recipe. So if you're going from frozen, you're going to have those ice crystals, which will incorporate into your batter and make it a little more loose. Um, this is just about a cup. One of our kiddos doesn't really like a lot of chunks in her muffins, so this will be just plenty for our family. So just give that a stir. Don't need to get crazy with it. We'd like to keep those berries whole, otherwise you'll have purple muffins, which is fine. <laughs> That's pretty too, but that is just fine like that. I miss some purple muffins. Yeah, because I usually keep them whole. <laughs> Let me in. Oh. All right, so spray a muffin tin. I have a 12 pocket muffin tin here, which is just the basic. And this should fill this up perfectly. So I'm just using a non-stick spray. Some people have a thing against sprays. Um, I know that um, some companies like Pamper Chef do make a, a sprayer that you can add actual oil to. And we actually have that. Um, I have olive oil in it right now. And I don't really, I don't think I want to use olive oil for this. But so we have those ready to be filled. I'm gonna grab a couple spoons. So we we'll take our spoons. I usually use I usually use two spoons for this, and just scoop it up. And oh, well, you can't see in that angle. I'll make sure it's in the back in here. So I scoop it up. And I use the other spoon to get it off the spoon. Does that make sense? So I'm not pouring the batter in. I'm actually scooping the batter in. This batter is a little thick, and this just works really well. And usually if you use the large spoons, you just do one heaping large spoon per muffin reservoir here, and that usually fills it up perfectly. So these will be like three-fourths full on each one. Sometimes all the way full, just kind of depending. Divvy these all up. This is like the perfect amount for twelve muffins. Let's see. <laughs> the kiddos are getting crazy back there. It is morning. And I try to get some of this stuff done before people will get all everybody wakes up, but that doesn't always happen. And there's a little setup to show you guys here. <laughs> Everything is loud. I'm just trying to get everything out of the bowl. And we'll just divvy up that last little bit between the tins here. All right. There we go. So we have our muffin tins filled. Now, if you really want to gild the lily, let me grab one thing here. This is kind of fun. You can use um, a like crystallized sugar. Um, I happen to have these like white sparkling sugar sprinkles. Um, I don't even know what these came from, but <laughs> I use them on muffins sometimes because they create just a little bit of a fun texture on the top of the muffins and an extra little bit of sweetness. So just go through and give that a little sprinkle. I think the other kind of sugar I'm trying to think of is like a turbinado. Turbinado? Is that what it's called? It has, it's just a big granule sugar. And it looks really pretty when you do this because it does caramelize a little bit and just kind of melt on top. And it looks really neat. So we're going to go ahead and pop these into a 400 degree oven. And we'll bake that for probably like 17 to 20 minutes, just kind of depending on how hot your oven is. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. good look at those oh yeah that's a winner 
Okay, so these turned out absolutely delightful. They have a lot of berries just kind of bursting out of the top. Can you see here? So my kiddos and I, we're just going to dive right in here. Even the dog wants to get in on this. <laughs> we're going to dive right in, but I hope you will try this easy breakfast recipe. And let me know in the comments down below if you do. Happy baking!